What are people saying about literally the income coming in and, and what they've got to spend? Yes, that's right. Good morning. I'm in this fantastic bistro in Pontypool, which is run by Age Connects Torvine. It's a local charity which helps out older people in the local area. And of course, you say there, the state pension is going up by 3.1% today. Usually, that would be pretty good. But a lot of people here are saying, actually, there's not enough money because of this cost of living crisis that we're in. So let's have a chat to a few people. Firstly, I'm joined by Bridget. Now, Bridget, you've written down actually a couple of things here yes. about what it's going to mean to you. Yes. So, you know, the pension's going up a tiny bit is that going to make a change to you yes it's not sufficient to cover the cost of everything going up and the utilities have just gone up and they're going up again in october what an exciting afternoon here in Cardiff Bay. The Queen has recently left after taking part in a ceremony to mark the sixth session of the Senate. She was joined by Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall and it's the first time that she's been in Wales for five years. Now, of course, it is that danger to life with flying debris. Just behind me, there's a bandstand where sheets of metal have just come off and flown in the other direction. We're keeping safe and keeping out of the way of it really busy market town of Abergavenny. We're squeezed into the press court and as you can see, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are just leaving the market hall behind me. Um, they've been meeting local traders, chatting about the agricultural industry. Do you think the reports of parties at number 10 will make people in Wales less likely to follow any new guidance? Uh, well, I think there's one very important difference that we have here in Wales and the same will be true of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Yes, good morning. The death of Sir David is affecting people across the entirety of the UK, but in particular our politicians as their safety is cause for concern once again. I'm now joined by the leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Jane Dodds, to discuss this further. Thank you for joining us on the Great British Breakfast this morning. I think that you know, some people confuse us just with the memories of the First World War or the Second World war where um, of course this has got huge significance but actually there's been conflicts in between. What they hear and what they deserve to hear are two different things obviously. The First Minister has indicated he will not be going as far as the UK government have gone in England but what we desperately need is a clear plan, a clear plan that shows the dividends of the vaccination rollout that has lowered transmission rates here in Wales and can get businesses like behind us open again and social distancing minimised to a total back to where we were before the Covid crisis because it's vital now that we bank the dividends of the vaccine rollout. Politicians, players and parents are all calling for more information regarding this decision from the Welsh Rugby Union. They want to know exactly why the time that these young girls have to play mixed rugby is being cut short from later on this year. Now, these girls have always known that once they've outgrown that under-13s team, they're going to have to go and find a, a girls-only rugby team to play for. However, they're upset that this decision has been made on their behalf prematurely without their consultation. Now, the girls and their families say this decision hasn't been made based on their Height, their weight, their strength, their age, or even perhaps uh, for safety purposes, they're concerned that this decision has been made based on their gender. Now, the, co the committees of rugby clubs across Wales were consulted on this decision, but not the girls themselves who are out on the pitch playing. Now, the member of the Senate for Regend and Porth Call, Sarah Murphy, is one of these uh, many people who are asking the Welsh Rugby Union for more information on this decision making. She's heard the concerns from a number of children in her her constituency who play for mixed rugby teams. Decision shouldn't be made about a group, whether that's children, whether that's based on gender, whether that's based on any protected characteristic that will impact them without getting their views on that and their feedback on that. So when you were in Glasgow, you said to me that you, you met a couple of people who were actually from Wales themselves and they were sent all that way to receive help and support. What were kind of their backstories? How did they feel about being that far away? I think it was the same as me. Uh, although it was COVID and although visits probably like weren't possible at the time, like it's, it's so hard being so far away and it's not you have to sort of... If you're coming from a hospital, you don't have a lot of belongings, so you're going with basically nothing to a place where you may never have been, people you don't know, and it's just really, it's quite scary. 
We're here down at a rugby club. I don't know where better else to get the atmosphere and soak it all in. I've come down to my local land of RFC to have a chat to a couple of fans, a couple of players about how they feel about today's game and the tournament as a whole. Let's have a, a quick sit down. We're joined by lots of members of land of RFC this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us on GB News this afternoon. Okay? Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, all excited. So Wales have been described as the underdog, Adrian, you know, going into this, this game today and going into this tournament. What do you reckon of that statement? Well, you know, it might do us well, actually, because, you know, all the pressure's on Ireland then, isn't it? So it gives a, a chance for the, the newer players to shine and, and uh, put their hands up to hold their places in the squad. So, Bridget, you're really concerned about am, actually yes. how I everything am. is going up in I price. Am, and yes. also, Maisie, you've got these concerns, haven't you? Because you've said some things which were really important to you yeah. that you do every week have gone up by so much mm -hmm. money, haven't they? The hairdresser comes, three pounds up. The chiropodist comes, three pounds up. Everything's going up. Um, and I don't think the four pounds will cover it, will it? Uh, and I've got an age, no, to an age now that I would like treats. I think I deserve them, do you? I taught for many years, uh, and I did all sorts of things. I'm 93, and I think I need it. I think he's gone wrong. Of course, the show isn't in Australia again this year because of travel restrictions, but locals hope that I'm a Celebrity will be here to stay in Abergele because of the amazing economic impact the show's had on the local town. Lily Hewitson, GB News, get me out of here.